Hi guys, welcome back to Garage Tech. In this video, I'm going to talk about the Gen 2 Cayman S 3.4 flat six engine and compare it to the previous version, Gen 1, the M97. Now, there's quite a few differences between the Gen 1 and the Gen 2 engine, and most of these uh, modifications are the same principles as the new developments that went into the 911's 997.2 with the new MA1 series engine. If you like this comparison, I'll do another one which compares the Cayman S Gen 2 3.4 to the 911's 997.2, that's the 3.6 and 3.8 engine, and actually you'll be quite surprised just how similar they are. So first things first, comparing the Cayman S Gen 1 and Gen 2, they are both 3.4 litres, so the displacement is the same, but the Generation 1 makes 295 brake horsepower and 340 newton meters of torque, and the Gen 2 is 320 horsepower with 370 newton meters of torque. So there's 25 brake horsepower uh, increase, and also for the Gen 2, uh, the emissions and um, fuel economy has also been improved. So what's the difference? Uh, the most significant change is the in the S version, obviously, is the MA121C, and it has direct fuel injection, so that's DFI. This means that fuel is sprayed directly into the combustion chamber, as opposed to inside the inlet manifold um, behind the intake valves on the Gen 1 version. But just to note, uh, the Gen 2 2.9 Cayman and Boxer engine is not direct fuel injection, but both 3.6 and the 3.8 911s 997.2 are. So direct injection, it has a number of advantages. Number one, uh, no fuel is wasted or left behind on the inlet valves. Uh, this point does have one uh, disadvantage, uh, is that the carbon buildup can start to begin to um, leave deposits and stuff on the back of the valves and there's no fuel to help clean it off. Number two, fuel is injected at a much higher pressure between 40 to 120 bar, which gives a much finer spray pattern compared to the standard injection proce process uh, with a pressure of approximately four bar. Number three, multiple injections can be made with more precise control. So depending on the engine speed and temperature, the fuel is injected on either the induction stroke or in a traditional injection system, like a traditional injection system, or it can be injected on the combustion stroke. Uh, point four, a bit of the boring stuff, uh, an increase in fuel efficiency uh, and obviously lower emissions. So it normally gets a bit boring when you start talking about uh, fuel efficiencies, but uh, if you can make more power with less fuel, well, surely that's a win. Okay, so we can't talk about the early Porsche engines without mentioning the infamous IMS bearing issue. If you know anything about the Porsches, I'm sure you have heard all about this already. Another feature of the MA1 generation of engines is that there is no longer any intermediate shaft. So this problem does not exist on the MA series of engines, so the Generation 2 Caymans and the 997.2s. So this shaft, which was fitted between the crankshaft and the camshafts on the previous models, were required in order to reduce the timing chain speed ratio and therefore the dynamic forces on and the strains on the timing chain. So through the use of new high performance timing chains, Porsche were able to simplify the drive chain um, mechanism uh, for the camshafts. So this also then had the additional benefit of actually reducing the weight of the engine by removing that intermediate shaft. So wins all round. Another issue which uh, has been widely spoken about all over the Porsche forums, etc. on the internet is uh, bore scoring. Um, this is where the piston skirt scratches and scores the cylinder walls. And it's largely due to the piston skirt clearance uh, and this can then lead to higher oil consumption, burning of oil, uh, lower compression and uh, obviously then if you get in lower compression then you could potentially could get misfires and, and lack of power etc. But all in all, uh, another thing which is enough to put you off purchasing an early Boxster Cayman or 911. So with the this new generation, I say new, it's been out for a while obviously, but with the newer generation of that engine, the MA series, um, this has also been greatly reduced. So one of the improvements is the uh, redevelopment of the oil supply system. 
the main difference is on the previous bottles is that there's now uh, additional uh, oil extraction points within the cylinder head. You've got an electrically uh, actuated demand controlled oil pump and also there's a uh, watertight sheet metal uh, panel between the crankcase and the oil pan. Um, so compared to the previous models, uh, the new MA1 series engines have not one but two uh, extraction points in each cylinder head. And in addition to that, the generation two engines have a total of five oil pumps instead of three. Yeah, five oil pumps, crazy. Uh, so these are located in the oil pan and they're driven by a shared shaft. As well as modifications to the oil supply system, Modifications have also been made to the pistons. So due to the direct injection, the piston crown or the top of the piston has also been redesigned to maximize the fuel and air mixture preparation. Piston temperature in the new engines is also reduced by means of a piston injection cooling. So this is uh, an oil spray nozzle that is fitted into the crankcase and sprays oil onto the underside of the actual piston. So to ensure that the necessary engine oil pressure at low revs and high engine oil temperatures, these spray nozzles are only open at the higher oil uh, pressures. Another modification uh, is the engine block. Uh, the cylinders are now connected differently at the top of the block where it meets the actual cylinder head. Uh, so the individual cylinders, which originally stood freely in a uh, water jacket, which was known as an open deck design, and now connected by a closed cylinder deck. So it's a closed deck design, that's what they call it. And it's like fitting a block guard. So if you've done any Honda tuning in your past, uh, you probably may have come across those. Um, but the advantage obviously of this design, it has a higher cylinder uh, stability, particularly with regards to cylinder shape. This is the roundness and uh, it's got a lower cylinder deformation. And that's over a much wider uh, load and temperature range. So this has uh, added advantage then of reducing the friction and also lowering the fuel consumption. And actually even the piston to piston ring sealing has been improved as a result of the enhanced retention of the roundness of the actual cylinders, which means a reduction of the blow by gases that can flow into the crankcase during combustion. So entry of oil from the crankcase into the combustion chamber is reduced, which also lowers oil consumption, which is another issue that some of the earlier engines used to suffer from. The cooling system has also been uh, modified. The coolant pump has been redesigned as well as uh, the revamped internal engine cooling ducts. So in particular, within the actual cylinder head around the exhaust valves, uh, in that area, so this actually reduces any of the hot spots in the cylinder head, so that can save warping, etc. The new coolant pump is no longer located in the crankcase as an integral component, but instead it's attached to the outside of the crankcase on the right hand cylinder bank as a separate module which is now driven by the auxiliary belt. Obviously, now the advantage of this design is that a large coolant pump is now fitted. To ensure that this obviously adequate engine cooling, the maximum flow volume of the new pump has also been increased by approximately 20%. So that's it guys. That's um, just a quick overview of some of the features that makes the, the MA121 series engine that much more desirable and reliable compared to the previous uh, M97. So that's between the Gen 1 and Gen 2. Now, don't get me wrong, of course, uh, they will no doubt have some of their own issues and com kind of common faults, but as a whole, these engines are far more reliable with less chance of uh, large repair bills, which is a huge con contribution to the price difference between the Generation 1 and Generation generation 2. In my next episode, what I'm going to do is kind of take a look at the difference between the 987.2 Gen 2 Cayman engine and then the uh, 981 engine so stay tuned for that and as always if you like this video give it a thumbs up hit that subscribe button and put your comments below okay thanks a lot guys take care